there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. It's so good to be here. It's so good to have you there. And what a wonderful privilege to come into your home or however you watch this program each day. And uh, just to bring you some really good information. I've mentioned before how often uh, people come up to me and say, you have the greatest guests. And that's true. And all I can say is the Lord sends them to us. And um, I know that he knows what you need and what I need. And a lot of times our guests are just the ones to connect that need uh, to the Lord. So it's a good, good thing all the way around. And we like to emphasize the home. And of course, there's no greater meeting place ever than the kitchen. Wouldn't you agree? We just all kind of just are drawn there, you know, it's like a magnet. And I'll be in the kitchen with Stephanie fixing some Greek chicken pasta. This um, is definitely a meal. And there's no end whatsoever to what you can do with pasta. But let me tell you about my guest today, Jennifer Smith Beagle, as a lady who absolutely is a walking testimony as to what the transformation of the Lord Jesus Christ can do in a life. I'm not going to give her story away, but I can tell you this much. She came from total dysfunction and was a full-blown drug addict at the age of 11. The fact that the girl is alive today is a miracle. But I mean, she is really alive. And I am anxious for you to hear her story because I know because of the mail I get and the request for prayer, these moms and dads out there are praying for that child who's in drugs and who's far away from the Lord. And I think Jennifer's story proves that that prodigal story is still alive and well in the world today. You're going to love her. So I'm anxious for you to meet her. And before I join Stephanie to fix this Greek chicken pasta, I want to again offer you the cross necklace with matching earrings. Uh, what a bargain that is for $24.95. You can order it with your credit card or your debit card, or you can write to me. And that price includes the shipping and handling. The address is uh, box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758. And um, the 800 number to use your card is 229-0059. Can you sit? And Stephanie's got one on today. Yes, because you sent me an email. You said, wear it or else. Is that what you said? Something like or that. Or something, please wear it. Or something. But you know what I like about this one? It's such a good size. Yes. Uh, I love it. It's I just big enough. Size, it's not too small. It's just yeah. a really good size. I love it. And um, as long as we have some, but this, um, when they're gone, we can't get any more. And I'm smelling some very strong onions there. Yes, so I have onions and butter. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put some flour in here and make a roux, mm -hmm. which is just a thickening agent. And then we have chicken, we have sun-dried tomatoes, we have... Well, this is it's supposed <laughs> to be feta, but I don't like feta that much. I so, love feta. Uh, it's gorgonzola. And it's so very, you like go gorgonzola. It's very similar, but I like the taste better. I thought, okay, oh, well, well it's your that. show. So yeah. if you want gorgonzola, Absolutely. you get Whatever gorgonzola. I want. It's your gig, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so I'm just... An artichokes. An artichoke mm -hmm. heart, yes. So I'm just, I'm cooking off the flour real quick. We also have chicken broth and, ew, olives. These <laughs> these are Greek olives. Still. I'm going to taste one. I don't know if I've ever had a Greek olive. They're very good. They're very salty. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I'm going to take your word for it. Okay, okay so I have chicken broth. I'm going to put in here. It's going to thicken up nicely. Mm -hmm. I was going to hold that so... You wouldn't be whirling oh, well, it around. Thank you so very much. This this is your episode where you stand and look pretty because you do that. I'm doing so nothing. Oh, very well. I love it. Well, every once in a while I'll throw something in the pot there. Okay. Let me just give this a minute to thicken up, and then we're just. This is one of those super simple, frugal, mm -hmm. easy recipes. Very frugal pasta you can get for a dime. Rotisserie mm -hmm. chicken you can get a rotisserie chicken and use it. Probably three times. Yeah, that's an awful lot of yes. chicken right there. And then I know feta cheese here has been on sale big time with a coupon and buy one, get one free. So, yeah, so this is super frugal. That buy one, get one free is a good deal. Yeah, I love it. You know, on one of the shows recently, you were talking about how 
hard it was that your daughter graduated from high school. Um, but I, wanted I just to, sigh. <laughs> what I want to ask you was, do you see a big difference in her? Um, somewhat. Somewhat. It seems like that is such such a milestone that after they reach that, all of a sudden they they seem older and they. Oh seem yeah, and you know you know you have babies knowing they're not going to be with you mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. You know they're eventually going to leave. So mm -hmm. you would think you would be mentally prepared for it, but I just simply am still not ready. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just ridiculous. Well, she's starting college in a few days, I yep. suppose. Yep. So. Yep. Well, you wouldn't want it any other way. I know. I know I would. I just want her to stay home for the rest of her life. Let's see. What's, what's a good age you could keep a child? 40. Oh, <laughs> I, I, oh, I know. know. I know she has to go. I know. I, I don't know. know, but I've got this pile of great grandchildren, and Every stage is so cute. You kind of wish, oh, you could this hold This stage them. is not cute. Okay, what do we need? That <laughs> okay, let's thick. go ahead and put, um, all let's this just start putting all this stuff. Sun dried, there, yeah. sun dried tomatoes. Yes, which is going to give it such a great Arti flavor. Artichokes. Mm, that's going to be delicious. Let's do some Greek olives. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, this is, <laughs> this is indeed. I didn't put them all. It'll, yeah, they're. Okay, they cheese. Quite salty. Gorgonzola, I love it. I put it in most oh, of my salads. Oh, look at that. Let's put some of that chicken. Okay, all, you don't want all of it. You, I, I, well, we'll start with some of it because I want um, there to be enough like, to coat the chicken and the pasta. It looks a lot, but uh, I did ask for three cups. So. And then we'll put some pasta in here. I'd like to know if anybody out there in TV land does not like pasta, right? To I me. cannot imagine. Sunday. I didn't know that person existed. Sunday after um, church, I made my dad's, you know, he makes me spaghetti sauce and I freeze it. Mm -hmm. So I got the biggest, I mean, platter. It's probably mm -hmm. four times what anybody else eats. And I ate that and then I napped. It was a great Oh, well, Sunday. that would make you nap. Yes. So look at this. This looks really, really, really mm -hmm. delicious. And I would imagine if you let it hang, <laughs> you yeah, it, go for it. Okay. <laughs> Might as well. It's there. Um, let me just get this stirred and then you can taste it. I think there's no way that could not taste excellent because of all the stuff we yeah, put in. Yeah, and they, the longer you let it, you're going to let and, it cook yeah. and marry. Yeah, we're, we're just doing An a hour from now, it'll taste a lot cooking. better than it does at the moment. Yes. Gonna put a little okay. on, and then is this cilantro? Yes, please. You can put it on, and then I'll put it in. Oh, you want all this in there? Sure. Oh, I thought it was for decoration. Oh, I'm gonna taste it. Go ahead. Okay. Oh my. Oh my. Mm-hmm. Oh my. You want this? You really do. It is absolutely delicious. Mm-hmm. That is. Mm-hmm. Oh my is right. Mm. What was it? The sun-dried tomatoes and the artichokes? Because something, something yeah. in there is mm -hmm. great. Artichoke hearts, mm -hmm. yummy. Mm-hmm. Well, if you want this recipe, it's absolutely free. It's on Pinterest. It's a you can email me. That's coming up. You can write to me. We'll be so glad to get it out to you. No cost at all. Mm. Now stay, and I want you to meet Jennifer Smith Beagle and listen to her awesome testimony. Isn't that If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. My guest is Jennifer Smith Bagel, uh, Beagle, Beagle, correct? And uh, I learned about her through a friend of mine, Susan Pippen, who is a woman's director uh, for the Assemblies of God, and um, I think it's called Highest, Highest Praise Church or something. And uh, when I read about Jennifer, I thought, she's got to come on Homekeeper, so I'm glad. Interesting the way the Lord networks, huh? It is. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Welcome, welcome. So Thank glad you. to it's have you. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, you know, your story is just um, it, it's arresting. It's, when I read it, I just uh, 
I just had to sit back and take a deep breath, sort of. I'd like you to tell the, just tell it. Absolutely. Well, as you know, I was a full-blown drug addict by the time I was 11 years old, but that stemmed from an abusive home. I'm the baby of seven, and I always laugh and say by the time my parents got to me, they said, do whatever you want, so I chose drugs. Mm -hmm. In that, uh, it was a lot of abuse, a lot of alcoholism in our home uh, being raised, so I just turned to that naturally. You know, I was curious as to what kind of homes did your parents come from? They came from broken homes, yeah, so. broken home after broken home, and I think that that's a really bad epidemic in our culture and it's from years ago. So I turned to drugs, I turned to alcohol. By the time I'm 11, I'm in trouble, I'm in foster homes, I'm drinking and drugging every single day. I quit school in the eighth grade and I ran away from home. And then I chose to live a life of drugs uh, from that point on until I was 31 years old. How'd you end up in foster care? I, I skipped school a lot. I got into a lot and of they trouble. Took, they took you from your parents? They did. They took me, well, my mother and my father were divorced. Mm -hmm. And I was living with my mom, who's now deceased, but she, uh, she didn't take very good care of us. Mm -hmm. And I ended up in foster homes. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, in that, I learned even more just how to beat the system. I was really good at beating the system. I lied a lot. I got away with a lot of crimes, a lot of things. And so when I grew up, I say when I grew up, I'm 14 and 15 years old on my own now, using drugs, drinking every day. I was a teenage pregnant mother, uh, got married as a teenager, divorced, married again and divorced by the time I was 23 years old. You had two by the time you were 23? I had two marriages, two mm -hmm. failed marriages by the time I was 23 years old and one son. My son, Christopher, uh, I completely walked out of his life for drugs. I was a crack cocaine addict for eight years. Can you explain, as I read your story, that that drug is so important that you can walk away from a child. That's, you, that's power. It was power. Uh, I, even though I was a teenage mother, I loved my child mm -hmm. and I, I drank a lot. I was an absolute alcoholic. I was drunk every single day, smoking marijuana, doing other drugs every single day. And I was still able to maintain some type of motherhood for my child. As soon as I tried crack cocaine for the very first time, Within six months, I lost everything. I walked away from my son, my second marriage. I sold my home for crack cocaine for fifteen hundred dollars, and I lived oh on the street. Oh my word! It was it was, what a was crazy. That worth? <laughs> <laughs> Not much more, <laughs> but I did. I was desperate for the drug, and I chose homelessness. I was homeless in the streets of Gainesville, Florida, for eight years. And I, in that, I accrued a three-page arrest record. I'm a convicted felon for cocaine, and I have many things on my arrest record from prostitution, failure to appear, contempt, uh, possession, paraphernalia. The list just goes on and on. Could you describe to the viewers how you navigate that homeless world uh, because you were there, what, seven or eight years? Seven, almost eight years. Where? where would you just find a place to sleep sometimes and sometimes you didn't? And Absolutely. Well, that's a great way of putting it, uh -huh. actually, Arthelene. Uh, I, I slept sometimes and sometimes I didn't. I would be up six or seven, eight days in a row because of crack, uh, getting high. And I had gone to uh, 80 pounds and I had sores and uh, just a lot of poison on me. You, it was very visual. And you just, you just manipulate the streets. You, I call it survival mode. Mm -hmm. I did anything I could to survive. I slept in the woods, I slept on park benches, I slept in plazas. What about food? Uh, food, you starve, you starve. Again, I went down to 80 pounds, but drugs were more important than food to me. It was, I ate every once in a while. I think I lived, I survived off of Airhead candy and Nestle quick chocolate milk. I got enough calories to not die at least, although that was questionable at times. And certainly when you get arrested and you go to jail, you eat because you're starving, literally starving to death. Okay, if you're homeless and where, where do you get crack cocaine? I don't know anything about this. Certainly. But do you know dealers and people who sell it? 
Absolutely. You become one. Well, where do you get the money? Well, I was a prostitute on the streets, and you sell uh, drugs yourself. I have a prostitution record on, uh, on file as well, and you do whatever you can for it. You are not the person that God created you to be. You, you are literally serving a dark kingdom. You rob people. You steal from places. You lie. You cheat. You do whatever you can to make sure you get that drug because it has utter control over your life. You have no control whatsoever. So uh, that I did all of the above. And did you think there's a better life out there somewhere or, or did you have any, any desire for a better life? That's a really good question. I did not know of a better life. I was not raised in a Christian home at all. Uh, like I had mentioned, there was a lot of alcoholism, a lot of abuse, a lot of rejection and neglect. And I was in the foster homes and stuff. And I just never heard of God, certainly well, not life. Jesus. It was life. This was normal. This was an absolute normal life for me. I had been to 12-step meetings and stuff. And you hear of the higher power and you can make that anything you want. And that's great for some people, but it wasn't working for me. I had been in jail. I've been in programs, I've been in court programs, everything, and I always went back to drugs very quickly, very quickly from leaving a program. And then one day I locked myself in a closet and I cried out to this higher power, God, and said, look, God, I don't know if you're real or not. I don't know who you are. I need you to hear me. I want to die. I'm done living. I'm done with life. Just take me now how I am. I had no, uh, no knowledge of an afterlife called eternity. But I know on that day when I cried out in that closet, I had severe schizophrenia. I couldn't go in windows or open rooms or stuff. I was completely out of my mind from all of the drug use, 21 years of drug use. And I just said, take my life. I'm ready to die. And I know I heard God say, finally, I can do something with you. And the right God answered. <laughs> the right God answered. So many of the wrong gods uh -huh. answered for years, but I cried out to the right God. And I know because he does have a plan for my life and he has a purpose for my life. God's a whosoever will God. Whosoever will cry out to the name of Jesus, he will save them. And he did save me. And I cried out and he knew I would be a warrior for his kingdom. I fought pretty good for the other one. Yeah, you, you were a general in that army. So. I was a general. Uh, and totally, you were totally ignorant of, of the things of God because you never went to church or anything when you were a kid? Nothing. So how did you end up in a church? Because um, there's one person who seemed to take you under her wings and disciple you. Absolutely. And what was like this, this neon sign to me that was flashing was Jesus said, go make disciples. Yes. And this woman took you and really discipled you, and I'd like to meet her someday. Miss Patsy, she's wonderful. She was, uh, she's an incredible woman, and she did. She, I walked into a church two weeks later, and after, after the closet episode, I walked into a church, and I never looked back. I went to the Welcome Center. Do you have any idea what I had no church idea. to go to? I, had, I walked into the richest church in my city, dressed completely like a street bum, and everyone was kind of looking at me. They didn't know what quite to say, and I went to this lady and said, I need help, and she said, I will help you, and she did, and she Great. mentored me for a whole year, and she took me through inner healing, and she really nurtured me. I love where Did she have a lot of of patience. She had great patience. <laughs> <laughs> she had great patience. You we know, have a lot of great stories. Discipling's not easy. No, it's not. That's what I do now. I'm the women's director for the House of Hope in Gainesville, Florida. I take women in out of incarceration, off of the streets, out of rehabs, and I show them the way of Jesus Christ. It is not easy. I say you have to deprogram your mind before you can reprogram. You deal with into a lot of thinking. ignorance too. A lot of ignorance. A lot of stubbornness too. Uh -huh. You know, we are stubborn people because we think we know it all as a drug addict because we survived, but we don't know the way of Jesus and his way is so freeing. It's so liberating. Was there a moment when you realized I don't need drugs anymore? 
Oh, goodness. It was overnight deliverance really? for me. It was quite miraculous, in fact. I was done. When I was done, I was done. I smoked a thousand dollars worth of crack every single day and got delivered that night that I cried out to God in the closet. Oh. Absolutely. The next day I had, I had three felony warrants for my arrest and I went and turned myself in. I've never turned myself in. Most I was people always, don't. <laughs> most people don't. I was a catch me if you can kind uh -huh. of person, but they always caught me. Uh -huh. Hence the three pages. But uh, I, he did. He just delivered me and he said, I'm going to use you. I want to use you for my kingdom. What did they you say when you turned yourself in? Uh, what? <laughs> 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 this is Jennifer turning herself in. Uh, and yeah. It was great. The judges all knew me. I showed up at first appearance and she's like, Jennifer. And I'm like, oh, hi, <laughs> I'm clean uh -huh. and stuff. And uh, it was great. And now I've worked closely with those very judges who've prosecuted me and put me in jail. And they sentence women to my program because they know the power that that has. Now, I don't know anything mm -hmm worse to think about than a mother giving up her child. Yes. Uh, which was in your life because of the crack cocaine. And God is such a complete God of restoration yes. that he brought you and your son back together. He did. How did that happen? Well, it was wonderful. My son was 11 when I got clean and started following Jesus. And somehow the Lord just opened the door through my family. He had moved to Kentucky from Florida and his father let me back in his life, which was an absolute miracle. And we just started talking over the phone a lot. And I did was able- Did he remember you? Oh, absolutely. We were extremely close. How, how old were you when you let him go? I was five when I he let him- He was five. He was five, I'm yeah, sorry. Okay. I wasn't five, that yeah, would be really yeah, young. Yeah, yeah. He was five when, when I walked out of his life so he and chose remembered the drugs. You know. Absolutely, he remembered. I was on drugs when I walked away from him. He remembered the smoking, the dope, the going into um, crack houses, being left alone and stuff. He remembered all of that. Was he kind of hesitant at first? No, actually. He welcomed he, you? He welcomed me uh, very nicely. And we talked over the phone a lot. I got to lead him to the Lord over the phone, which was incredible. And then he got baptized at 14 and he just wanted to love the Lord. He asked me, Mom, just what happened? What did you do? And I sat him down and for hours we talked and we cried together and we just, it was incredible. And then year after year after year, we just got restored more and more. My son is my best friend today outside of my husband, of course, but my son is my best friend. And now you his father passed away. And so you, you moved I to did. Kentucky to be with your son. Absolutely. Uh, that's, very significant. I mean, it was. I was on the mission field in Guatemala for a year, and his father did pass away. And I moved back to, or I moved to Kentucky, and that's where our relationship really got restored. He saw that him. mom was there, and that this whole Jesus thing wasn't just this gimmick or this part time thing. It was a full time life commitment, it's a lifestyle. And he, he just fell in love with the Lord and our relationship got restored. He just graduated out of the army and he's doing great, doing wonderful. Friends, I hope you're listening to this because that's the kind of God we serve. Amen. He's a God of restoration. And I've mentioned it before because the prayer requests that come to me, there's a huge percentage of parents, moms and dads that want prayer for their prodigals. Well, you, you're the prodigal of all prodigals, yes. I would say. And um, it's not a mystery, no. the home you came out of, that you would go that direction. Correct. But uh, that doesn't make God any less effective. That's no, no. problem with him. Uh, you, you now have a ministry and who better to deal with what you were than, than you are. Um, this is House of Hope in Gainesville, Florida, right? Yes. yes. And you are the director of the women's ministry. How does that work? What is, what is the whole plan there? The whole plan is obviously restoration. We do uh, the whole family. We do um, obviously restore first to Jesus Christ 
and then we work on the in, inner parts of the woman with healing and we put them back with their families and we just do whatever the Lord tells us to do. It's always a case by case situation, but the bottom line is you were created for greatness and you have been, you've been stolen from. So let me show, absolutely, absolutely. We train every woman for leadership and a warrior spirit to go back out into our streets and into our world as, as a warrior for the kingdom of God. And we send them out as missionaries. Is there a certain percentage directed to you from the courts, maybe from the police department? No, not at all. Uh, we were a small entity right now, but we're growing and we're grateful for that. We don't despise the small beginnings, but we, we show up, we, we hear from the Lord. We try to use our best discernment. And if the Lord says, go to court with this person, we do. And, and then we get that lady. Or if someone calls from off of the streets, that sounds really desperate, then we will take her as well. And uh, I'm sure you run on donations. We do. Yeah, we have the website up of the Lord's dealing with your heart. You can probably go, go through that because these are the devil's throwaways. Yes. The, these he pays the highest prices, I believe, for for the prostitutes and for the drug addicts and all. And that's just his most successful tool and all. It is. And you are an ordained minister now. I with am. With the Assemblies of God. And out giving, I hope you're out giving this marvelous testimony a lot. People need to hear it. I do. I travel quite a bit. I've been to Colorado. I heard you were born and raised yeah, there. Yeah. I did a couple conferences in Colorado and I've traveled around this country and all over the world sharing my testimony. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And that's my heart. Well, it's absolutely true with you. And, um, Jennifer's husband is in the studio with us today. Uh, you're a newlywed kind of. I how, am. How May 16th. Oh, I, they're both smiling from <laughs> ear to ear. They can't help it. But um, you have a rather interesting family. We do. Uh, prior to our marriage, I have adopted two children from America, from the system. And my husband has adopted three children from China. So all of our five children that are at home, 14 years and younger, are all adopted. Mm -hmm. And we, we make it work. <laughs> we make it work. They're in four different schools and it's, it's a journey, but it's awesome. Now, the boys that you, how long ago did you adopt them? Two and a half years ago. And how old were they? They were uh, six and eight. Mm -hmm. What prompted that? You know, God prompted that. It was honestly a struggle. I was approached by their dying mother, uh, knowing that she had heard from the Lord that I was to take these children and I thought she was crazy. I was doing all of this ministry, all traveling and I don't have time for children. And the Lord showed me their little faces out going, true religion is widows and orphans. And as, <laughs> as though your life hasn't been complicated <laughs> enough. <laughs> He, God also has a sense of humor, doesn't he? He does, but Arlene, I, I ran so hard for drugs. Mm -hmm. I can run just as hard, if not harder oh, for that, God. That's perfect. I can't tell you, just, I've uh, just been fighting tears, just Amen. listening to this, so thrilled what God can do. And I have a feeling that everybody watching this today needed to hear it. I'm thankful for this great testimony, thankful the Lord brought it to us. However, we are out of time. So please join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. And here's a homekeeper right here if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yes. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.